The godfather of AI, Jeffrey Hinton, just gave us a dire warning of what's to come next. I think people will lose their jobs. And what's going to happen is the extra wealth created by the increase in productivity is not going to go to them. It looks like we're about to see a massive disruption to the labor market due to AI. Next, Google is reportedly working on AI that takes over your computer. Under the codename Project Jarvis, they developed an AI agent that can browse the web autonomously and complete tasks on your behalf. This is very similar to Anthropic's new computer use feature, which is the demo you're seeing on screen right now. Lastly, an autonomous AI artist named Boto just made $351,600. This is an AI image generator that generates images based on its own ideas without human prompting. Amazingly, it generated over $4 million in art sales since 2021. With every major AI company now racing to develop AI agents, we're truly on the cusp of something big. So jumping right into it, I'm going to play you guys the full clip from the interview with Jeffrey Hinton, also known as the godfather of AI, because it really sets the stage for the rest of the video. Also, I'm sure most of you already know who Jeffrey Hinton is. In case you didn't though, he was a pioneer AI researcher who essentially invented machine learning, and he actually just recently received the Nobel Prize in Physics for his quote, foundational discoveries and inventions that enable machine learning with artificial neural networks. Anyways, here's the clip. Many people say, you know, it'll create more jobs. For this particular thing, I'm not convinced of that. What we're doing in the Industrial Revolution, we made human strength irrelevant. Now we're making human intelligence irrelevant. And that's very scary. So there's some areas where demand is very elastic. An example would be healthcare. If I could get 10 hours a week talking to my doctor, I'm over 70, um, I'd be very happy. So if you take someone and make them much more efficient by having them work with a very intelligent AI, they're not going to become unemployed. It's not that you're now only going to need a few of them. You're just going to get much more health care. Great. So in elastic areas, it's great. There's some areas that are less elastic, like um, I have a niece who answers letters of complaint to a health service. Um, she used to take 25 minutes to answer a letter. Now she can just scan the letter into ChatGPT, it'll give an answer, she'll look at it, check it's okay, that's five minutes now. Um, I suspect they'll need less people like that. It may be they can just, everybody can complain a lot more, but I suspect they'll need less people like that. So some jobs are, some jobs are elastic, others aren't. The non-elastic ones, I think people will lose their jobs. And what's going to happen is, the extra wealth created by the increase in productivity is not going to go to them. So this is something that I think people don't often talk about. I mean, whether or not you think AI is going to actually replace us and take all our jobs, it's pretty clear that if it does, it's likely not going to be a good thing for the average person. As Jeffrey Hinton alluded to, the people who designed the AI and distributed it, like Google, OpenAI, Anthropic, to name a few, these are the people who are going to benefit the most from AI automation, and those who are actually being replaced by the AI are the ones who will suffer the most. Now, I think in the long run, if everyone gets replaced by AI, then of course we're going to have to have some major fundamental changes to our society and economic systems. And on this channel, I try to look at things from a more optimistic perspective. So again, in the long run, I think we will be okay and we will figure it out. But in the next like three to 10 years, I think it's going to be a really tough and confusing time for a lot of people. Now, if you're still not convinced of what's coming, just look at what's going on right now in the AI space. Major AI companies like Google, for example, are rushing to develop AI agents that can control your computer. It states here, Google is developing artificial intelligence technology technology that takes over a web browser to complete tasks such as research and shopping. And further, Google is set to demonstrate the product codenamed Project Jarvis as soon as December with the release of its next flagship Gemini large language model. The report added, citing people with direct knowledge of the product. So as I briefly spoke about in the intro, this is very similar to Anthropic's new feature called Computer Use, which I already made a full video on, I'll pop that up on screen right now if you're interested. Computer Use allows Claude to control your computer, doing anything from browsing the web, filling out forms for you, and even creating you websites. We're still in the very early stages of AI agents, they still can't really do much, but again, as we know with AI, things tend to move very quickly, and before we know it, these AI agents will be doing full-on jobs on a computer, kind of like a remote human worker. Now, as the article claimed, we will potentially be seeing Project Jarvis as early as December with the release of their next Gemini model. Another big AI model release that we expect in December is OpenAI's Orion. Or maybe not, because this article actually turned out to be false. So after this article was posted by The Verge claiming that OpenAI's new Orion model was coming in December, and that it will be a 100 
100 times more powerful than GPT-4, Sam Altman took to Twitter himself to call them out for their blatant lies. He replied simply, fake news out of control. Then further, someone also stated, bruh, you just ruined all our nights, which Sam Altman replied, don't worry, plenty of great stuff coming your way, just offends me how media is willing to print random fantasy. So given that Sam Altman himself has said that this article is fake news, we're obviously not going to read through it, and from now on, we'll take what The Verge says about future AI model releases with a grain of salt. On the topic of Sam Altman and OpenAI, there were a few other stories that we need to talk about from this week. The first being the departure of Miles Brundage, a senior advisor on AGI readiness at OpenAI. He posted this blog post titled, Why I'm Leaving OpenAI and What I'm Doing Next. So he has a TLDR section here, he states, I want to spend more time working on issues that cut across the whole AI industry, to have more freedom to publish and to be more independent. I will be starting a non-profit and or joining an existing one and will focus on AI policy research and advocacy, since I think AI is unlikely to be as safe and beneficial as possible without a concerted effort to make it so. But the part that really shocked me from this blog post is the sentence right here. He states, So how are OpenAI and the world doing on AGI readiness? In short, neither OpenAI nor any other frontier lab is ready, and the world is also not ready. To be clear, I don't think this is a controversial statement among OpenAI's leadership, and notably, that's a different question from whether the company and the world are on track to be ready at the relevant time, though I think the gaps remaining are substantial enough that I'll be working on AI policy for the rest of my career. So the reason this is so shocking is because this is a guy whose whole job and focus at OpenAI was to essentially prepare for AGI, and he's fully stating here that we're simply not ready and nor is anyone else. This is an indication that maybe AGI is coming faster than we think, and it likely won't be a smooth transition from a pre-AGI world to a post-AGI world. Next, this is something you may not have seen, it's a post from OpenAI titled Simplifying, Stabilizing, and Scaling Continuous Time Consistency Models. Diffusion models have revolutionized generative AI, enabling remarkable advances in generating realistic images, 3D models, audio, and video. However, despite their impressive results, these models are slow at sampling. We are sharing a new approach called SCM, which simplifies the theoretical formulation of continuous time consistency models, allowing us to stabilize and scale their training for large-scale datasets. This approach achieves comparable sample quality to leading diffusion models while using only two sampling steps. So virtually every AI text to image generator out there right now is built on diffusion models, and OpenAI has essentially created a new way to scale this up with continuous time consistency models. These models are much faster, use less compute, and seem to offer a comparable performance. I honestly haven't seen many people talking about this, but it seems like this could have some major implications for real-time AI generation, and I'm sure OpenAI is working on this right now. In other AI news, Genmo introduces Moki1 Preview, a new state of the art in open source video generation. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, there's nothing really special about it, it's just a new open source state of the art video model. As you can see, these are some examples of clips it generated, and for an open source model, these are pretty good. Of course, open source is always going to trail behind, but it is getting quite close. They also posted this graph here measuring motion quality, and it's apparently leading every other video model in this, including models like Kling, Runway, and Luma's Dream Machine, which are literally the best of the best video models. It also beats every other model in prompt adherence, which I guess is how accurately the model follows your prompt. Now, who knows how accurate this graph is, but it's clear that we have a new state-of-the-art video model with Genmo's Moki1. In other news, there was this clip I came across from NetVRK of their AI-powered metaverse, which is essentially a virtual world kind of like Minecraft or Roblox, except you can build absolutely anything you want, and there's NPCs in it that you can actually talk to. Take a look. Imagine there is a world without limits. All your favorite games in one. The first true Web3 metaverse experience, all taking place at what we call Genesis Islands. A place where you can buy your own land and build on it. Anywhere, anytime, and anything you want. By using our limitless creation engine, you can build games and play them together with your friends. You can build the house of your dreams, decorate your loft, or just build experiences for others and earn real money by doing that. We are talking about a world which is alive. Meet NPCs that think, talk, and interact unscripted, powered by hyper-intelligent AI. Are you experiencing love? I think I might be. When I'm talking to you, I feel this flutter in my chest. 
So I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know what that was at the end there with the AI NPC literally confessing its love. But the point is, there's so much you can do with the combination of AI and gaming, and we're starting to see more and more projects like this that really gives us a glimpse into the future. Finally, let's talk about the AI agent artist who earned 351k selling art. One of the assurances we're often given in response to the fear that AI image generators could replace human artists is that there will always need to be a human involved. Generative AI needs a human creative to tell it what to do. But don't tell that to Boto, a fully autonomous AI artist who just raked in $351,600 in sales at the auction house Sotheby's, creating a new milestone in the history of AI art. The non-human artist is now responsible for in excess of $4 million in art sales since it began its art career in 2021. But Boto isn't a free spirit entirely. The AI bot generates images based on its own ideas without human prompting, but a 15,000 member community called Boto Deo decides which of its thousands of outputs to mint as NFTs each week, which in turn shapes the AI artist's own taste. So this AI agent artist is not exactly selling the art itself, but it's definitely creating it and humans are choosing its best work to put on the market. If we tie this back to everything else we talked about earlier in this video, this type of dynamic is probably what we'll see at first with autonomous AI agents. The idea of the agent doing all or most of the work and then having a human decide which of that work to use and where to apply it. Obviously, this is going to vary extremely depending on the task the AI agent is doing, but my point here is that humans are still going to be working in tandem with the AI agents at least at first. Anyways, that's all the AI news for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a like. And as always, if you want to stay up to date on future AI news just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.